Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at how to do a USB bar splash on our Asus Strix Z590-F gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to do a USB bar splash on our Asus Strix ROG Z590-F gaming Wi-Fi. Wow, these names are getting longer. There are a few things that you are definitely going to need in order to do this. You're going to need, first of all, a working PC or some means of connecting to the internet and downloading the actual BOSS file. You will also need a USB drive to actually store said BOSS file onto, such as this one. This is a SanDisk Flare, 32 gig. Fantastic drives, use these all the time. In fact, this is my go-to drive for doing BOSS updates. So if you're having problems, maybe worth checking out the links in the video description. Pick yourself up on these from Amazon. They are extremely cheap. Somewhere around five, six pounds for one of these drives. They are very, very cheap and worth their weight in gold. Something else you will also need, which doesn't necessarily have to be gold, but would be nice if you have, is a power supply. So we're going to be using this one. This is a Thermaltake Tough Power GF3 1000 watt. Obviously, you don't need a thousand watts to perform this task, but this is one I've got on hand at the moment. So I'm going to be using that. You're going to need two connections to the motherboard itself, so one of which is going to be your main 24-pin power connection, which goes into the motherboard, which is generally in this position just here. So you're going to need one for there. And also, there is a 8-pin connection at the top here, which is your EPS, or supplementary CPU power connection. So you're going to need one of those as well also. Uh, we've got one connected up to our power supply, so this is your EPS connector. Normally, it's a uh, 4 plus 4 might be a completely solid 8-pin. Uh, you may find that your power supply actually has the word CPU written on the side of it, so that is what you're going to need. Also, you'll need a, a kettle lead or whatever type of power you use in your particular country to power your power supply. Uh, ideally, a box or something relatively anti-static to actually perform it in, and you're going to need uh, about 6 to 10 minutes of your time in order to do this. So, that is pretty much it, what we need from the motherboard. Now, you're probably wondering why you need to do this. If you're looking at this video already, then you probably know why you need to do this. Maybe you've dialed in some really bad bar settings. You've uh, basically got it so you can't get into the system anymore. The bar is completely dead or the system appears to be completely dead. You may find that you're getting problems with the motherboard for some reason or other. There isn't really any new processors on this platform which would require a USB flash. So that kind of rules that bit out. So it's a little bit of a wasted feature really. But in some instances, if you're just buying the brand new board and you want to get your system up and running, you just want the latest BIOS on there from the get-go before you start installing things. Maybe you're having issues with RAM compatibility. That seems to be one of the bigger bones of contention with this particular platform. So there are lots of BIOS versions available. And actually, if we go to the website, which we'll do shortly, you can see there's an actual ton of BIOSes which have been released for this board, Consider it's had a relatively short life already. Anyway, with that said, I think that's pretty much everything covered here. Let's go over to the PC and I'll show you how to download the BIOS. And don't worry, I won't go too fast and I will put the links for the BOSS and all the kind of relative stuff in the video description for you to check out at your leisure. So this is the website for the uh, ROGASUS.com. This is the UK version. I'll link to it. it. You may find if I link to this and you're in another country, it might try and take you to a different location, but this is basically where you want to be. So go to your motherboard, ROG Strix Z590-F gaming Wi-Fi. We're then going to head over to the support tab, which is this one here over on the end. You can just do a quick visual check just to make sure your board is actually this one. Uh, you don't want to be flashing the wrong bar, so that would be pretty bad. So go over to support. And we'll go over to driver and tools. And in this section, we've got driver and tools and BIOS and firmware. So we're going to click on BIOS and firmware. And then we want to choose which motherboard we've got. Some actual versions of this have more than one available, so luckily we've only got the one here, ROG Strix Z590-F Gaming Wi-Fi, and then it will highlight all the available BIOSes. So the latest BIOS is version 1701, obviously there's uh, quite a few other ones available, so we'll go with the very latest one, so you can go through, check and read through all the information there, but once you're happy, you can then click on download, and we'll save this to our desktop. And on our desktop now, we've got our ROG Strix Gaming Wi-Fi BIOS there. So we're going to extract all and extract it to the desktop again. And there is our file. Now, it's really important with this. You do actually have to rename the BIOS file so that the USB flashback can actually recognize what it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on the BIOS renamer.exe. 
and this will come up saying this file has been renamed blah 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 to use flashback copy the file to the root of your usb flash drive press any key to continue so there we go so now you can see our file name has actually changed so what we can do is now plug in our usb drive and your usb drive is going to need to be empty this one's actually got a previous flash from another motherboard so i'm gonna ditch that one probably a good idea a good practice to do a format on it anyway so we're going to go ahead right click on it choose format and we're going to fat32 is the default so that's fine uh, allocation size 16 kilobytes we'll leave that as it is if there's anything in the volume label i would suggest removing that it does seem to make a difference i have found that some drives just refuse to flash when there is a volume label in there or there are certain characters in the volume label so yeah leave that blank if you can click on start and obviously it's going to erase everything on the disk so make sure you've got a backup if there's any important data when you're happy click ok let's take a few seconds and there we go format complete so we can now close that one again and we can go back into our bios file there on the desktop so what we want to do is copy this cap file so we're going to right click and you can choose cut or copy entirely up to you so we're going to do copy then we're going to go over to our usb drive and we're going to do right click and we're going to choose paste or you can do control v should you wish to and there is our bios file now you'll notice that it's now called a cap file and also the size of the bios file is around about 32 megabytes or 32,772 kilobytes to be precise if it's different than that then this is probably not going to work for you and it hasn't extracted properly so do make sure that that is the right size but once you're happy, that is it. So we can close this down now, eject the drive from the system and go back over to the motherboard. Okay, so we're all good to go. We've got our USB stick with our BIOS in. So I'm actually gonna stick this into the motherboard straight away. Now on the back of the motherboard, you'll probably be getting some close-ups of this. You can see it is actually highlighted around the outside edge of which port is suitable for the USB BIOS update. So there is a white rectangle around the outside edge of it. And just below that, you'll see there is the BIOS flashback button also with a white rectangle around it. Just above there is the clear CMOS button. Don't press that one, you want the BIOS reset one. So what we're gonna do, put that in there. Happy days, so that is the relatively easy part done. So next thing to do is to connect up our power supply. So if we do the eight pin one first. So this is your four plus four or eight pin EPS. And that goes into the top here. So it's gonna plug that in. Make sure that's locked into position. We don't need RAM. Don't need a processor don't need anything else attached to the board at this point obviously if you've got a built system i would suggest at the very least just removing the ram from your computer just to try and prevent it from trying to boot up when you press that button that is always beneficial you don't necessarily need to remove the cpu it's probably best to leave it in there actually to protect the pins but anything else which may make it boot ideally you want to try and remove or at least remove one part of that chain so next one 24 pin which goes into the far side of the motherboard which is this one here again I'm just going to plug that in and we'll wait for that telltale click. There we go, lovely jubbly. And last of all, we need some power to the actual power supply. So I'm going to turn that off. It's actually in the off position already. I'm going to plug in our power cable. Then we're going to switch it back on. And you'll probably find straight away that your ROG RGB lighting on both the chipset down here and also on the board at the top just here, this is all gonna light up. So that means that you're actually getting power to the board. That's actually a good sign, believe it or not. So what we're gonna wanna be do now is to press the button on the back of the board. So normally what I do is press and hold it for a couple of seconds, so count to three. So one, two, three, and release. And then wait a few seconds, and you should see there is a little flashing LED going on in there. And that will probably change speed a few times during the course of this. At some point as well, you may see your power supply spin up, depending what it's doing. But essentially, just leave it alone, let it get on, it do its own thing, and uh, yeah, just be a little bit patient and wait for it to complete. Should take somewhere in the region of about five to six minutes. So if you look at your watch, currently we are 2027. So this should be done roughly by hopefully 2035. 2034 something along those lines so and there we go we can see now the boss led is actually speed up a bit it's flashing a little bit quicker so the first bit is initializing the bios kind of system the second part is reading the actual usb drive if you get to a point where it's flashed a couple of times and then stopped it's probably because the boss drive isn't 
one which is compatible or if there's something wrong with the actual BAS file. So you probably need to stop and start again. Ideally, when the BIOS light is flashing, you do not want the power supply to lose power or do anything crazy like that. Um, you can't see the fan spinning on our particular one, that thermal take one, because it has a like a zero fan technology. So we can still see this getting power because we've got the flashing LED and we've also got our illumination on the top there. So we're just going to be patient and effectively we're just going to wait for the BIOS light to turn itself off completely. And there we go, the BIOS LED has turned itself off. And that is it. That one actually only took about four minutes in total, so quite quick. This is a kind of USB 3 drive, so I'm guessing it's a little bit quicker. But yeah, seems a little bit quicker than some of the MSI ones I've seen recently. So happy days, but the light has gone off, so it has completed. So what you can do now is you can power down your power supply. Obviously, if this is in a PC that's all built up, yeah, just uh, turn your computer off, press and hold the power button, however you want to do it. So we'll just turn it off. Then we can disconnect all the cables. Ideally, I would suggest a really good idea at this point. If you're not entirely sure if it's worked or not, put your processor back in if you haven't got it in already. Make it so it can actually boot, connect up a monitor, fire it up, and just to make sure that it posts. You do have, of course, your diagnostic LEDs on the top here, so CPU, uh, RAM, VGA, and boot. So obviously, if you're getting the CPU light come on again, it's probably worth actually reseating your CPU anyway. It could potentially be that some of the pins actually on the motherboard may not be quite making contact with the processor, which unfortunately, due to the nature of the LJ arrays, they do get bent and they sometimes do not connect properly with the processor. So pop your processor out, put it back in, and hopefully that is gonna be it if it hasn't been your boss, which is causing the problem of it not booting. Anyway, I think that's gonna pretty much wrap this one up. If you've got any comments or questions, you know where to leave them in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.